Rodriguez. Uh, congratulations on the knockout win. What are your initial thoughts after a performance like that? Well, thank you. Uh, geez, well, I mean, my thoughts coming in was, wow, I'm uh, so grateful to get the opportunity for the UFC trusting. Uh, like I said, every fighter on the squad, I believe, is, is, is trusted by the UFC to put up a performance because you know, people all over the world are flying in to watch this fight. This is one of those events where it's a Super Bowl event that happens every once in a while that you get a gem like this. So if you are on this card, you have to consider yourself lucky. And uh, I, I, and I made sure that I, I make it count. And I went out there and I had fun. Uh, Trevor Giles said he had the best jab. He didn't catch me that often. But he does have very fast hands. And, you know, when I caught him, when I saw him fall, I just, I mean, immediately, it's almost like a flashback for my debut. Every fight has a different foul. Absolutely amazing. And you said at the media day that when your initial fight with Trenton fell out, you were hoping to rebook it because you liked this matchup. So after this fight, did everything play out like you had expected or did Trenton catch you with anything that surprised you? Yeah, I think everything worked out exactly like uh, like like it, like it should have. Uh, is very is my mic screen is it that okay that makes more sense um well yeah, yeah i'm still i'm still uh, yeah i stuck by it. like uh, exactly what i thought would happen happened it is a he is a really good fighter yes his hands is yes his hands are yes yeah, crazy hand speed for a middleweight smaller build though you have to that's that's one thing i saw as soon as we got an occasion i i knew that and he has the his foot works pretty well he comes in he comes out and the fight worked out perfectly as that boxing style. I have a kickboxing style, and I believe if you can use eight limbs or at least four against two, you're always going to win that fight. And uh, good hands, but I had better all-around stand-up. I had better kicks. I had uh, more combinations. And uh, finally, the kicks eventually set up my hands to look made me look like the boxer. That straight right that put him down, was that a punch that you knew you could take advantage of in that fight or did you just see an opening in the moment and capitalize on it? Well, I mean, there was one or two things that was going to happen uh, as far as the striking goes. Uh, he has a pretty high guard with his, his uh, right hand when he throws that jab because he relies on that jab. So he's, his right hand's always pretty up. So I, lent, I, I threw a few hard left hooks and like on my debut, I got a left hook knockout. It's pretty much one of my favorite punches. The left hook is, has a lot of power. So... Um, Immediately in the fight, I saw I have to wait for him to get a little bit more tired, get a little bit more sloppy before that left hook's going to land. But then I saw when he throws that right hand, that left jab, that, that stiff jab, he almost rides it. He rides it. A lot of people do that. They they throw so hard. And that's why I caught the low kicks well, because he steps hard, throws that, that jab. And yeah, eventually I saw he started, when I backed up, he wanted to land elbows, he wanted to land knees, wanted to land when I got up against the cage and I just saw that opportunity. A few times you'll see me go back against the cage because I could see every time I backed up, he almost opened up and was looking for something big. I wasn't scared of the takedowns. At, I just knew I had to watch for some knees, watch for some elbows and uh, counter from that. And that's exactly how it played out. Eventually I got up off the cage and I saw his hands were down. I just caught him straight. And one of the storylines coming into this entire card is the performance bonuses got jumped up to $75,000. Uh, you'd have to think you're on the short list for a bonus at this point. So if you do get that 75000 do you have any plans for it? Absolutely. I mean, the last time I was sitting in Abu Dhabi, and I got that first round knockout against Marcus Perez, who's never been finished. I've all finished all my fights, so I got a first round knockout against him on a short notice debut. And I was certain when I got that knockout, this is performance bonus time. And obviously, Jacqueline Buckley with that in the knockout of the year. And then... I'm like, well, great. He got, he gets, a, he gets a bonus. I get a bonus. There's enough bonus for everybody. And then Corey Sandhagen comes with this spinning yuki, and I was like, oh shit. And uh, I just missed out on that. Well, I came out here tonight and said, well, listen, it's tough competition, but I want to get that that bonus. And when they know up to the 75, I was like, well, great. Uh, I'm gonna take you home even more. So you know, hopefully it was enough. Uh, there's a lot of great fights still to happen, and uh, I'm. I did enough to get that bonus and uh, ultimately they know who decides uh, who deserved that uh, I haven't watched the fight I don't know how good the fight was it felt pretty good it felt high intensity it felt great that's why I wanted to fight Trevin he's a game opponent and you know I walked out and I finished a guy who's never been finished uh, before the third round via uh, he's only been finished with submissions uh, I came out here yeah, I'm prominently a submission finisher and I knocked this guy out so 
you know, if there's any props to be given, uh, that's it. But like I said, there's a lot of fights still to happen. And finally, uh, I, I'm sure you're going to get a bigger name for your next fight, back-to-back -back stoppage wins. It's a kickoff for your music career. Are there any specific names you're eyeing or when you would like to return? Well, to be honest, uh, I'm still finding a home here in the UFC. It's uh, it's my second fight. Uh, Trevor Giles already was a was a big name. He is a big name to fight uh, on your second fight. I think he is top two at five. I think he was ranked number 22. Three fight win streak. Has wins over big opponents. Uh, so, you know, for me, I'm not I'm not rushing that. You know, I'm on my first contract. So, getting that big names on your first contract doesn't really make a lot of sense. So, finding a home, uh, getting that up to gun time. Uh, we'll sit, go home, sit and see who makes sense. I mean, uh, to get a get another guy in this ranking where I'm at, I, I'm not sure where I'm. I think I'm in the top. I, I was top 30, and now I'm probably going to go up a little, and then and still fight there, fight around there, and then by uh, 2022 when it starts, start climbing that top 20 ranks, uh, but properly getting in the top 50 and start fighting ranked opponents. Okay, over here. First off, did I say it correctly? You said it perfectly, man. I'm so glad I could help people. Uh, I gotta ask you, you know you have a big platform. You know a lot of people are obviously watching tonight. How important was it to you to like, hey, I kind of need to let people know how to say it. It's getting a little a little much. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's it's, it's understandable. I mean, it's a different culture, different way of speaking. That's just the way it is. So, uh, you know, when I, when I was fighting in Poland uh, in the Eastern Bloc, like, they, they got a little bit better. They said Rikus, which is a lot closer than, well, to be honest, the American folk have been struggling to say my name. It's uh, just because of the R. They don't really have the, the sounds in the, in the vocabulary. So, I mean, it's just uh, saying it correctly and teaching people how to say it. And, uh, well, hopefully uh, it becomes a name that really doesn't, you know, it gets says often enough that it's not hard to say anymore. But yeah, definitely, like I said, you know, uh, Dana White has mentioned me twice in the didn't know now you know uh, videos, <laughs> and he butchered my name both times. So it was about time to tell people how to say my name. Were you able to see him on the way out the cage? Uh, I did not. I did not. But uh, yeah, hopefully afterwards. Um, this is obviously a big experience being on the undercard for Conor McGregor. I'm sure friends and family were already very excited for you, but what have your friends and family been saying? Like, do they ask you if you've seen Conor? Are they just excited for you to be fighting tonight? What has just the reception been for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, South Africa is going absolutely mad right now. Uh, it is... Right now, it's quarter past three in the morning. So it's 3 a.m. in South Africa, but I fought at 2 a.m. But the whole country is up. Everybody's watching. Uh, it's a, it's like I said, it's like our national rugby team, the Springboks, are playing a World Cup final. The whole country, the support was amazing, and especially being on a corner card. Now that's a, that's that's a big for me and for for my country, especially being on South Africa, not being very known in the fighting in the UFC, not having a lot of UFC fighters uh, in the history and right now. And getting that second victory is absolutely massive for me uh, and for my country, making my country proud. You know, South Africa is going through a lot at the moment and has been. So for me, positivity in the country, just you know, getting, getting, getting people excited, getting people motivated, inspiring a whole nation, and the unity. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, like I said, uh, hardships in South Africa, and to see a country unite that uh, has been divided by so many things, to unite a country like that. It's, it's absolutely incredible for me like the whole country comes together when 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 I fight this this fight I can't believe the the amount of support from all over no there was there was no there was no people divided in this fight everybody was just rooting for me to win and fighting on a corner card obviously a massive massive deal now I won the prelims I told them you know I got my short notice fight on a main card I delivered with the first round knockout uh, they gave me this big card. They gave me a, a, a prelim fight. Obviously, very, very happy to be on a prelim of uh, the Conor Poirier trilogy. But I'm not a prelim fighter. I haven't been for a very, very long. Uh, I, I defended bouts for five years, fought for bouts only. I had three world titles outside of the UFC. And uh, hopefully now the lesson is learned. I am a main card fighter and I want to be on the main card. Forgive me if this is naive in terms of geography, but when they talk about, you know, Nganu, Adesanya, Usman bringing a UFC Africa type of card, 
Is that something you feel like you'd want to be a part of? I know it's a big place, but are you excited? If they bring it, are you excited to fight in a UFC event on the continent? You know, if they bring the UFC to Africa, there's only one place they're going to bring it, and that is South Africa. I can guarantee it, Cape Town, Pretoria. That's one of the places they're going to bring the UFC. That's the only place, as I believe. And if they're going to bring the UFC there, I promise you I'll be a bigger star than both all those names you just mentioned. Very good to you, right? Uh, how quickly are you hoping to rise through the rankings in the division? Well, like I said, I'm on my first contract right now. So, you know, fighting the big names for, you know, I, I don't like to bring the money into this. It's not, you know, it seems like almost the, the thing to do these days. Everybody complaining, getting more money. It's not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be that guy. Um, but, you know, there's a certain, you, you get your set contract for your first few fights. So, for me, it's finding my feet, finding a home in the UFC. Uh, the moment is still very big. Well, believe it or not, like when I, when, I, when I fight in the UFC, this is only my second fight in the octagon. It is massive for me. It's, uh, the pressure is incredible. It's, uh, I'm still, you know, finding my rhythm in the octagon like I would when I was fighting outside of the octagon. And um, it's starting to become a home. Now it's my second fight, getting that second seeing i you know i always believe that i'm the best in the world but i do compete with the best in the world right now and i'm doing good things uh, getting through the first few fights maybe the first three or four fights then starting to getting that ranked opponents that's 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 what the plan i have in my head and once i start climbing that ranks the ranking between 15 and one for me is not a big difference i mean out of those guys though not to call them out or anything but do you fantasize about some of the matchups with them aside from the champion you know, after my debut, I called out uh, uh, Trailblazer, Kevin Holland. I called him out after my debut, and then all of a sudden, this guy goes out and knocks out Jackeray. Uh, uh, he was ranked number 20 when I called him out. It was back in October. And uh, I have to tell you, I promise you, I have everything in, in my arsenal to beat him if we had to fight tomorrow. So, you know, he's a, he's a you know, kudos to him. He's one of those game guys. He just shows up on 24 hour notice to fight. So, you know, it's, it's all about fighting a game. I fighting a, a name and right now he has a name and you know he's in with the sharks right now he's in the top 10 and i think it's a dangerous place for him so i mean if i want a quick way into the top 10 he's my way but you know that's that's just the way i see it in terms of that was a guy i was looking to fight and i saw myself beating good stepping stone for me and all of a sudden he's knocking out jacker so you know that, that just shows you that's the quality of the fighters in the ufc the a number twenty ranked guy can 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 become a champion in one fight. That is a hundred percent possible on any given night. Congratulations! Thank you so much. Sounds like you want to bring a lot of awareness to issues and things going on in South Africa, but with wanting to try to climb the ranks, a lot of fighters we've seen from other countries have migrated to the U.S. or migrated to some place where they can get more fights. Do you feel that it's going to be tough to try to keep rising the ranks, fighting only once, maybe twice a year? Um, and is that something that you maybe have considered relocating so you could get more fights to, to possibly rise up the ranks quicker? Um, no, I mean, if getting fights is not a problem if you, if you, if you perform every time. That's, that's really not the case. It's uh, definitely not a problem to, to get the fights. And if you perform, you get fights. It's, it's, that's the way it works. And uh, relocating to uh, US, my team got me here. My team is the, is the team that I've been with the same team always. And I do go and train abroad. I train with, with a lot of other teams. I go, uh, I travel the world. To, I mean, I'll go for a few weeks there, go here to, to, to pick up knowledge. But at the end of the day, uh, the team I'm with is a team that able to me. They brought me three titles. They got me into the UFC with two spectacular finishes. I mean, what more do I need? And other than that, I always say every, every culture almost Fighting is in our DNA. Fighting is the most primitive sport in the world. We all have it in us. And we have a different way of doing it. The way we do it in Africa is completely different to the way in the States. The way they do it in Russia, though if you see the Russian dudes fight, it's completely different to how Americans fight. Everybody has the unique style. And I believe me training in Africa, fighting in that style, I bring something to this cage that, that nobody's ever seen. I bring something that is on the orthodox style, a, a type of power and a, a type of a tenacity that that doesn't come from yes so technically we are not we don't have the sport for that long or we are we don't have first division wrestlers but we have that african style and we have that african heart and that's something that i think nothing can buy and i 
country and uh, I'm not I'm not I'm not planning on leaving it full time anytime soon I'm not planning on, on leaving my family friends and my team over there I think uh, if I'm gonna become the UFC champion and I will become the UFC champion it's going to be out of Africa great great answer and last one um you mentioned that you're normally a submission finisher but you do have nice finishes like what you did tonight do you have a preference between the two or do you actually like the fact that you are still able to finish under striking and you're able to finish on submission as well yeah i think uh you know uh, physically uh i just the submission just came and uh, it took me a while to to get to get my groove uh for some it's always end up on the ground uh, whether it be in the scramble whether it be a slip what and uh, the submission finish game now, I'm not one of those guys that prefers to finish a fight this way or let a guy uh, off the hook to get something else. If I see a finish, I take it. So if the submission's there in this fight as well, the end of that first round, um, team, that if this if that round was 10 seconds longer, that fight was over. And so, I mean, the submission presents itself, I take it. The knockout presents itself, I take it. Congrats on the win. Thank you so much.